Well, good morning, tubers. It's, uh, it's actually almost uh, noon. Um, I'm going to be working on the truck today. I'm going to be doing uh, sort of an annual uh, maintenance to this uh, pickup. Um, usually once a year or, or sometimes I might skip it and go a little later. Um, I like to take my front wheels off and service the front brakes, uh, repack the wheel bearings, uh, especially because you know, I'm running 35s on here, so it's a little bit harder on those bearings. Um, so I like to keep everything lubed up and whatnot. And I'm thinking today, since it's uh, it's not January, but uh, it's not too wet. It's pretty dry out right now. Um, I figured this would be a great time to take advantage of the weather and work on the pickup here and make a video for you guys. Some of you older viewers have seen me do this, but we got newer viewers who subscribe for. Um, this truck and other things that we do and well, I need to get some videos out on the truck. Um, it's kind of been going to be my big focus um, is just maintaining it and getting her all fixed up. In the last video we fixed the light bar and actually have it properly wired with a you know pigtail connector and a weather pack connector. Um, first of all we need to jack the truck up and for those of you new to this channel, I have a Dana 44 under this truck. Straight axle. Uh, got it from a 78 uh, F-150. I think it was one of those all-wheel drive ones. It has like the drive slugs and the wheels and stuff. Um, but it had matching gears for what my truck has, so um, got it for like 500 bucks. Uh, came with an, the the, a the guy was selling a nine inch to go with it. it had matching axles. I've got it as a kit for 500 bucks, but anyways, I had videos on this, but I had to take them down because we've had some conflicting problems with other people. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up one side. I'm going to put one of my big heavy duty jack stands under it and do the same for the other side. So the whole front of the truck is up in the air. Um, but we'll, what we will want to do is I've got it in gear and it's um, parking brake is set, which parking brake actually works on this truck, at least on one wheel anyways. We're going to put these behind the wheels. We don't want it running into our new car. Oh, might be just a little windy today. Okay. My dad got me those. I love those rubber blocks. You can run them over and you won't kill them. Um, I'm going to make a little bit of room. These panels need to go up back up on the bench. That's another thing that I want to try and get into my truck so I can have rear speakers. And then this cord needs to get rolled up. going to be greasing up the entire front end um, which I'll be able to show you a, a new tool that I have actually I've already showed it but I need to make a separate video for it like these really big stands That'll be good enough. We're not entirely even. Let me get her on two clicks. Now we're going to be even. Alright. 
Here we go. Rip off the ground. And these older brakes on these axles kind of suck. I'm not too big of a fan just because of how they're mounted. They don't really slide as good as newer brakes do. Um, so that's why I always take these apart and service them. Um, I may have the wheel bearings a little tight on this side, so we'll double check it. I'm just moving the whole thing here. There's no real play to speak of. Let's go check the other side. I don't have any play in my steering. Um, this thing's been pretty pretty tight. It's just got the that freaking UPS type freaking semi truck steering box feel to it. This is about the same as the other side. No real play. The ball joints are holding up pretty good. I keep them greased with Bigfoot grease. Really tacky stuff. Uh, the loggers around here use it and um, cause you know that logging is hard on the equipment and so whatever works for them I've been using on my stuff and uh, it's been holding up. On one of the wheels here I have a little bit of a screech, a little bit of brake noise so um, I'm gonna take a look and make sure there's no rocks or anything in the bearings, or not the bearings, the uh, brake pads. So that's one, th one reason why we're gonna do this. So we're gonna take out the brakes first, see what they look like, see how much pad material we have. I put brake pads in this. Uh, well, when I rebuilt the axle, and that was uh, three or four years ago, I've put about twenty to thirty thousand miles on this front axle ever since I've uh, freshened it up. I feel a few sprinkles here and there, so let's try and get this done. Big wheel, big tire, big tour. Everything looks pretty good up here. Yeah, I'll just clean this brake surface up here. Nothing's rubbing. And we got, what do you think, 60%? 50% brakes. Look like they're wearing pretty good. But what I want to do is get this off, clean the junk out in between here, and then put some more stuff in there. It'll keep that lubricating. Those uh, energy suspension bushings I put in this track bar a year or two ago, been working pretty good. The James Duff bushings that come with that track bar just suck. And I've actually seen that same problem with um, uh, Dodge 2500 uh, track bar bushings with the aftermarket bars that you can get. Um, some people are complaining about the poly bushings. So I'm like, just get the rod end bush, <laughs> rod end uh, track bar. Spend a little extra money and do that instead of, you know, the bu those bushings. Like, screw it. I'm hearing sprinkles. There we go. Oh good, not on that tight. You only need to put these in snug. I think it was my two wheel drive setup. I must have put them on a little too tight or somebody before me put it, no. Oh, that original brake, so it must have been me. I think I put it in too tight and it messed up the threads. And uh, gee, I, once I went four wheel drive, I never really worried about it because I was like, whatever. Don't matter no more. <clears throat> I'll probably clean this up and put some blue Loctite on it. Yeah, I, got, I think I got the bearings just a little tad tight on this. I don't want them too tight, you'll burn them up. <clears throat> and uh, 
waste, waste fuel. Although, this bad boy's been getting about 20, about 20 miles to the gallon in the winter time, which has been better than some other times. I finally have the tune kind of dialed in where it's it's got enough, it's got plenty of power, but it's got a, you know, fuel consumption's pretty low for how big this truck is. I seem to be having some difficulty trying to get this out of here. There we go. How's our stainless steel braided brake line holding up? It's always been kind of coiled up like that, so. That'll work. Steel pistons. Our <laughs> our little shims kind of come down a little bit. It's amazing how it does that. And it's still on there, so I'll just leave it alone. We got a decent amount of brake pad material left. Doesn't look too terribly bad. It's not glazed over or anything. So, put the pad back here. No heat cracks. I think I've actually replaced these once because I had a. Um, the last set was a really cheap set and it did uh, it heat cracked pretty bad. This actually feels like it's rolling pretty good. I've got it where it's like turning and honey, like a brand new hub. That was just the brake, brake drag. And then we take this off. It's a little bit easier, yeah. That was just the brake drag. Still kind of free wheels, just a tiny bit. They were blue C wedges. I actually want to put the four degree set in here. That's kind of a big project. We got to get the truck jacked up pretty high. <clears throat> I think I need to get another jack, a floor jack. That's what I need because I can jack this truck up at the same time and then get it on stands safely. And then we can let the axle droop down, get these springs out of here, get the get the buckets off, and then we can get the uh, get the sea wages off and we can put a different set in. Um, I also I need to go to the junkyard and get a new front drive shaft. Well, new to me, um, because I found there's one for a um, a truck with like an E4OD. It has I think it's a total length is 45 inches, and then collapse is about 39 and a half. And I need something that will kind of meet halfway meet. Uh, meet a little bit longer than what I have now. I need something that what that's you know at right height bearing to bearing or end cap to end cap um, like 41 inches and I think that E4OD drive shaft will be just perfect for this. Um, so we're gonna be doing a junkyard run uh, in the future because um, I need to go get that shaft and then we'll put you know new u-joints in it grease up the splines and slap it in here and that will make um, my front driveline noise pretty minimal because right now my shaft is extended way too long and the splines don't uh, um, mesh 100% so there's a little bit of play in there and it's allowing a little bit of a, vi a vibration kind of noise so that's something that we need to fix um, you know there goes a hundred bucks but, and I don't like the U-joints that are in this drive shaft. They're kind of, they're just, they're a little sloppy, like side to side, and that kind of makes for some added noise. And I like to have my hubs locked when when the weather's gonna be icy and snowy for a little bit. 
Um, I like to leave my hubs locked so I can just put it in four-wheel drive when I need it for a little extra traction. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a brush, clean this out. We'll get some paste and then we'll just put that in there and um, get, I'm going to get the air compressor fired up. We need to grease up these joints. So I actually need to wipe this off. dirt off of here. I don't think I've put Bigfoot grease in this just yet. I think the last time I greased it out was whatever I had left. I've got Moog ball joints in here and they've been doing pretty good. I mean you just keep your stuff greased and lubricated on a regular basis. Um, it'll last you a long time and I'm, I'm running factory tie rod ends and um, I also don't wheel that much. <laughs> Which was the original reason why when I was going for four wheel drive in this was just for additional traction during crappy winters and light off-road but um, it was it's actually been a lot nicer with the solid axle. I mean, it just, it's got its, you know, shortcomings and stuff of, or disadvantages, but can't go as fast and crappy terrain, but it drives a lot nicer and I've actually been pretty happy with it and it's easy to align. It took me like two or three tries and I got this aligned without having to take it to a shop and it drives straight down the road, so. And the tires aren't wearing funny. Um, I'm gonna pause you for a second. I'm gonna go fire up the air compressor, get some pressure built. And then uh, we'll try out this new little um, grease fitting gun. One thing I want to do is actually flush the front brakes. I've done the rear um, about a couple months ago when I, um, actually longer than that. Um, I bought them when we did the fuel tank shenanigans. And uh, um, I did that because while I was under there, I was trying to make this braided brake line that I got uh, that came with this kit here when I put these, uh, put the solid axle in. And, uh, <clears throat> I was getting cold. Um, anyways, I wanted to have that work, so I just have solid brake lines all the way around. Um, so I flushed the rear, but I need to do the front. And uh, so what I think what we'll do is we'll see if this cracks free first. Um, this hasn't been undone since, uh, gee, I can't remember when. Um, so this needs to come undone. It's probably fine, but we'll see if it'll come out. I got a 10 here. Oh, it's a nine. Actually, wait. It's not a nine. Oh my God, it's actually, it's standard? I think three eighths. Oh yeah. Always good to have a drip pan, especially if you don't own the place. <laughs> okay. Oh. Very nice. Okay, we got some fluid coming out. Looks pretty good. So here's what I want to do. We're going to close this off. Um, and we need to check our brake fluid upstairs. See what we're looking like. This is coming out pretty good so far. Um, but I want to see what we're looking like up top. 
I opened the bottle to top off my clutch master only to find out that it was still good. Um, that's another thing we gotta do on this truck. I gotta replace this O-ring. I found my new O-ring for this, so we gotta do that in um, another video. So let's see, what we got? We're up on an angle, so hopefully we don't smooge everywhere. Try not to get dirt and crap in there. Get a towel and take a sample. And it looks pretty clean. I think what I'm going to do, since I've been on top of this brake fluid stuff, we're going to um, hook up our bleeder. It's pretty clear. And we're just going to uh, let this drain through. Or I can suck it out with my extractor and then we can. Um, just put fresh in there and then bleed out fresh through the whole system. Suck out most of the fluid. And get it too dry. Okay. At this point it's advisable to not touch your brakes at all. I think there's a little bit of dirt at the bottom. Now the rear uses a smaller portion and your front uses the larger portion. I just sucked it on anyways. So why not? So now we're going to put fresh brake fluid. Fill it right to the top. We got enough to do maybe two cycles. So let's go. We'll crack that fastener side open and we'll let it drain. We'll get our little tool here ready. And I just emptied it so it wouldn't leak fluid into my car because I was working on a friend's rig. Get that on there. I think the last car I did was the Lincoln. And that brake fluid was pretty gross. Uh, and this here, yeah, I need to wipe the jar out to get a better reading. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently push on the brake pedal to push fluid through there. Did we do anything? Maybe I don't have it open enough. Pedal was feeling pretty solid. Hopefully I don't squirt brake fluid on you guys. Any brick fluid, folks? It's like maybe my uh, guy here is a little plugged up. Yeah, that's weird. full of dirt. So much for that. A second ago when I pushed on the brake pedal I had a big uh, 
bubble of air come out. So it looks like we're flowing brake fluid now. And that's coming out pretty clear. There's an air bubble there. Close it off. And just snug it. This is something else I got off on Wish. And I think it's plugged. So, probably gonna throw that away. Hey, wait, we're not done yet. We gotta grease the suspension. <laughs> Would have been easier with the caliper off for this, but yeah, we can get to it. We can get to it. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna be using Bigfoot grease for this. We're gonna flush her out. Um, but, we don't really have a brand name on our, this is the cupo that I'm using. There's the back. Works with just about any um, grease gun. And I got, this is just a normal line that comes with this air grease gun, which I'm not too big of a fan of these. I kinda wanna go back to a pump, hand pump one, but you know, much larger one to run the, I like to run these bigger cans. And this fitting here, this actually has been working pretty good. I used this on the U-joints when I did the Lincoln. Um, and it's just, for how simple and cheap it is, it's worked out pretty good. So, um, I believe I've got a link that I can give you guys for this. Um, it's pretty easy to install. I mean, it goes on just like you would put a normal fitting uh, for one of these air guns or handguns. Um, so, yeah. It works pretty good. Let's see if it'll work on this axle here. Let's see. Uh, can we get that on there? Feels like it's on there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it looks like it's working. And it's not leaking. That's the big thing with this um, quick connect. It's actually been sealing up. So there should be a little relief back here for the grease. So I'll just slowly pump it just until grease comes out. I don't actually want to, you know, kill the boot on this. That's probably good. <laughs> yeah, almost no mess. And this bug foot grease, you can see the orange stuff, it is a high tack and it is very messy. And this has been saving me from uh, getting my hands all messy. And I've been wearing these really thick gloves I got from Harbor Freight. They've been working pretty good too. So let's see. There we go. Got grease coming out. Okay, now I've already cleaned all these off. That's a big thing. I'm gonna clean them off and make sure they're free of any problems. So let's see. Um, I, this was a cheap drag link that I got, and it's been working really good. I haven't had any problems with it yet. But um, <laughs> um, it, I don't like this boot. It, I, I guess it works, but I just don't like it. I like the other ones where they're actual full-on boots and stuff. Um, but let's fire in a hole. This one might be a little dry. I haven't done this in a while. There we go. Oh, there we go. This has got some old stuff in it. There. And this is an old uh, conversion link from Jeff's Bronco Graveyard. I might actually try and locate a new one of these. There's your Bigfoot grease. And it doesn't have any play in it, it's just the boot might have a little tear in it. Oh yeah, I'm 
just gonna take advantage of this really nice weather and work on my truck. Should have done this yesterday. Oh yeah, so this, this is probably the pad that's making my noise. That probably had a rock or something in it. You see that? Yeah, right there. It's left a little groove in my rotor here. So I don't know what that is. That could have been some kind of piece of dirt that got in there. So I might actually hit these up with some sandpaper just to clean that up. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm probably just gonna leave that alone. I might, this Harbor Freight thing is falling apart again. I'm gonna tighten that up. That ought to be good. My new can is a little messed up. But let's see if it still seals. Yeah, we were out on the other can. Let's see if this thing works here. Uh, connect back out here. Yeah. There we go. This one was dry. I'm not seeing any water come out yet. That's what you don't want to see. Okay, now this thing's working pretty good, except for when I run out of grease. Yeah, I think this is the first time putting Bigfoot grease in there. It's uh, harder to wash away. It's about the, it's the same formula or same spec but it's got a uh, higher tack level to it. Let's give her a chooch. That ought to be good. Okay. The old pickup here is fairly greased up. <clears throat> Put it on there. Okay. I'm gonna hit the brake pedal and we'll see what comes out. Well, first, make sure we're not low. I don't think we're going to need to bleed much fluid out. I've been keeping this truck pretty clean with the brakes. I think I'm just going to top off the master. Call that a day. <clears throat> Let's see if we half crack it like that. Can we get it to bleed without any air? I think that worked actually. Let's pump it. Close her off. Snug it. And that should be all she wrote. You know. Before when I got this truck, it took me <laughs> it took me a good two or three years to get clean fluid out of these brakes. The rear was really bad. Um, when I first got the truck, I had nothing but rusty brake fluid back there. Um, and a lot of it was coming from the master cylinder. I've gone through two different master cylinders, actually three total. 
I finally, the one that I have in there now has been really nice, so. All right, how's that driving position for you guys? Let's start this baby up with two fully chooched, freshly maintained batteries from the charger. Oh, she's cold. Leave it on cool, we'll just get some nerf on the dash. I'll leave my window open so that air can, it can vent. <clears throat> I'm not sure works. And if we need light bar, we got light bar. Let's go for a little Snooze cruise. Not fully warmed up yet. You know, just go for a little drive here. Give you guys a little 4BT. Wet weather 4BT. Brakes feel good. I just checked the tranny fluid on this. It's actually still a little over full, which is what you want on these trannies.
water. put a new windshield in this truck and all the water leaks have stopped for the most part. I've got this little one by my wing window but that one, you know, that only happens when I'm driving. But, and just sitting and it's pouring down rain, the carpet was just getting soaked and then it's taking a toll on my floor. But now it's been pretty nice and slowly drying up with the heat drive it, so that's why I'm going to drive for the next few days and just get this cab nice and warmed up. See, Adam's not home yet, so now I can park my truck in his spot for a moment. Go move my car and move this in the. Well, move this behind the car. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video.